Now, one possible object or particle that could make up dark matter is something that is called WIMPs. WIMP is an acronym, and it stands for Weakly Interacting Massive Particles. Massive, meaning these things have mass. You could, if you could collect enough of them, you could throw them on a bathroom scale and weigh them. Weakly interacting, meaning that they do not interact with other things, like they do not interact with electromagnetic waves. Well, what are electromagnetic waves? This is light. These particles, we can't see them. Um, we can't see them in any electromagnetic spectrum. We can't see them in the infrared, the ultraviolet. They do not give off radio waves. Um, they do not give off gamma rays and x-rays because of the fact that they just do not participate with the electromagnetic force. They only interact with the weak nuclear force and gravity. So that means that whatever these crazy things are, they have a force of gravity. They can push one thing against another. And the weak nuclear force is responsible primarily for neutrons holding a neutron together. And a neutron, I think we mentioned before, left to its own devices eventually is going to decay into a proton and an electron. A neutron is not a primary particle. It is made of two other particles. Whatever these WIMPs are, they're cold. And cold in science means slow. They're not moving very fast. They're not zippity doo dying through the cosmos. But they do have a tendency to clump. And things that have a tendency to clump together, that basically means gravity. The moment these WIMPs are theoretical, and there are many experiments undergoing right now to try and determine where, if there really are WIMPs and what kind of WIMPs they are. So I know it kind of sounds like a cartoon, but this is real science that's going on right now. We're trying to figure out if dark matter is hot, warm, or cold. Now, when you say these terms in physics, you are turn, referring to fast moving, kind of medium moving, or slow moving particles. And astronomers and physicists have figured out models. They can computer model a variety of things. If dark matter is cold, it has been predicted that the fabric of the cosmos is going to look sort of like this. Um, if dark matter is warm, basically meaning the energy and the speed at which those particles are going to move, it is believed that the cosmos is going to look like this. And if neutrinos are, our dark matter is mostly made out of neutrinos that are moving really, 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 really crazy fast, the fabric of the cosmos should look like this. So these are models based on what these individual particles act like. Well, observation of what the cosmos actually looks like has observed this. This is really a map of what the fabric of the cosmic cosmos looks like. And it was predicted if dark matter is warm, indicating its speed, it would look like this. And if it was cold, it would look like that. Well, if you compare what is actually observed to these two models up here, which one looks most like the observed? Cold dark matter or warm dark matter? Yeah, cold dark matter. Cold dark matter shows a lot more filaments, and when we actually see dark matter and can map it out in space, it has got lots and lots of these filaments. So our current understanding of whatever dark matter is, it is cold or slightly warm, and meaning it's moving kind of slow or not very fast, and it's made of WIMPs, these weird, weakly interacting particles, plus neutrinos, Enrico Fermi's little nuclear ones. Dark matter has made the cosmic web. Uh, many years ago, Margaret Geller and her team started actually mapping the cosmos. And what they did is they looked one galaxy at a time, and they started measuring how far and what is the location of those galaxies. And when they put all of it together, it wasn't random. It had a structure. And that structure is the cosmic web. 
what has been discovered is that galaxies formed on the regions of high dark matter. Why do we know these are areas of high dark matter? Well, dark matter exerts a force of gravity. And so we can determine where these areas of high gravity are, and those are actually also the areas where the galaxies tended to cluster. We think this is sort of like a scaffolding that was the underpinnings of the cosmos, that galaxies formed in these areas of high dark matter, and between them there are vast voids. And voids are these areas where are, there are going to be very few galaxies and also very little dark matter. We are still investigating this. I'm going to ask you to watch a video in a little bit, kind of to illustrate this portion. But one of the things that's really cool modern science that's going on right now is there's experiments being done to detect WIMPs. Now these weakly interactive massive particles are hard to detect. First off, the experiments for these have to be located far underground because of the fact that radiation from the sun and from the sky will interact with the sensors and give false positives. And so where do they have a tendency to put these experiments? Deep in the ground in mines. Um, in Sudan, Minnesota, there happens to be an old abandoned gold mine. And this mine, oh, gold or copper, I apologize. I'm not sure what they were mining up there. Probably iron. It's the Iron Range of Minnesota. But these deep, deep, deep mines, they have put an experiment down at the bottom of these mines where they're actually looking for wimps. Now, one of these wimps, if it comes in, it would break an atomic nucleus and would give a very particular collection of subatomic particles it would emit when it interacted with normal matter and scatter those all over the place. The challenge is these WIMPs are very difficult to detect. Um, it, they only get 3 to 10 hits per year that are possible real life hits by WIMPs. And by time you account for the fact that there might be errors in the equipment or dust or something like that, uh, it's a very slow, slow process. This is another experiment. This one is actually occurring um, for the University of J Tokyo. And this is an underground chamber. If you see these little people on a boat, there are little light sensors all around this underground chamber. And then it is flooded with water. And these people right now are actually floating around fixing some of the light sensors. When the people are gone, they fill the entire chamber full of water. And the idea is that if one of these weakly interactive particles, one of these WIMPs, would come in and cause a particular kind of decay, particular kind of nuclear reaction, these light sensors would, in a very specific predetermined pattern, light up in a specific geography, and they would say, aha, we have discovered WIMPs. These are things that we are looking for right now, and uh, it's still cutting-edge science as the moment I'm writing this. So how much dark matter is out there? If you took everything that we know of in the cosmos, about 0.4% of it is luminous matter. This is stuff that glows. This is going to be stars and nebula. About 4.5% of everything that's out there is normal matter. So this is protons, neutrons, electrons. This is all the dead stars. These are black holes. This is interstellar dust, neutrinos, you and me. We fall into this tiny little small fraction of the entire cosmos. Looking at the amount of gravity they give off, over 25% of what is left out there is dark matter. It's something that we don't truly understand yet. Remember, it doesn't interact with light. It's just a weird and unique thing. It's made of these odd particles called WIMPs that we haven't even detected enough yet that we can say that for sure we know what we're talking about. It makes up about 25, 26% of, of the dark matter. And what else that makes up the entire rest of the universe when we say a combination of matter and energy in the universe? Well, that is something that is called dark energy. Vast majority of all the matter and the energy in the universe is made up of dark energy. And that is a story for later.
Before we finish this section, let's talk about cosmology because that's what we are in that's what we're doing. We are engaging in the study of cosmology. You need to know this definition. It's the study of the structure of the evolution of the universe. What's the structure of the universe and how did it evolve and how does it change? And that's what we are in the middle of doing. The cosmosology, the study of the cosmos. And just for giggles before we leave, um, this was a newspaper ad that said, make cosmology your career. Training and supervision and hairstyling, blow drying, permanent waves, coloring, frosting, and skin care. Yeah, no, cosmology and cosmetology, not exactly the same thing. One letter makes a big difference. All right, that will do for this time. We'll see you again later. <laughs>